Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, all of you. Thanks for joining today. And we are going to focus on QoS introduction and implementation. It's a short webinar, uh, but it's, it doesn't mean that if you don't understand a slide, when I, when I talk on a slide, you, you need not keep your uh, questions on your mind. You can shoot out at any time. As um, you can just raise uh, your hand, you will be allowed to talk to me. I can answer you back. And I also saw a lot of questions by you in the forum. All those questions will be answered during the delivery itself. Around somewhere around six questions I have seen so far from the forum. All the questions will be answered. They are all in our uh, delivery list. So we start. QoS, quality of service. What is quality of service? And why do we need them? Uh, or how to implement it, where to implement it, and what are the different tools we have to implement it, which tool goes where. At last, we'll have a demo, uh, a, a small demo. It's not all the QS concept going to be demonstrated. Again, let me put it something very straightforward before I start. This is not the depth of QS that you're going to have. It's overall QoS. It will give you a complete idea of what QoS, how it is there and so on. If you really want to go in deep, you need to really uh, approach us for the training uh, for three days or five days, which uh, you know, she, can, she can arrange it for you. Right. Now the admin will arrange it for you. <clears throat> now, QoS recommend. Do we need quality of service? Of course, we need quality of service. We have quality of service when you board an aeroplane. You have a first class queue, you have the, the business class queue, the premium class, you have the economic class. You have quality of service there. Now, how do they provide quality of service? By queuing different passengers into different queues. Similarly, we need to queue different application traffic in different queues. Not all applications are same in our network. We have different applications. They all generate data. They all generate traffic, which wants to use the network, but they're all not of same kind. They're all not of same size. They all differ in various ways. Some are very time sensitive traffics. You know, they cannot tolerate delay. They cannot tolerate congestion. But congestion is always possible. Whatever the advancement that happens in the networking, you know, once upon a time we were having just 56 kbps and we moved to 10 MB and then we moved to 100 MB. We have one G, one gig, 10 gig even 40 gig today, but still congestion will be always there because the network users keep growing more and more. So there is a need for quality of service always, whatever the bandwidth improvement you do, quality of service is always mandatory. Now, in order to provide this quality of service, we need to discriminate the traffic. Traffic discrimination has to be done. We need to we need to identify the traffic, classify them, so that you can provide different prioritization to the traffic that needs more priority. You can give prior, more priority. The traffic that can be delayed can be delayed so that you can avoid congestion. So the very first thing that we need to know is after we understand what is QoS and why we need QoS, the next thing that we need to understand is I need to classify all the traffics. I need to identify the traffics. I need to discriminate the traffic. The reason is not all application traffics need similar treatment, similar priority. You know, not everyone who flies in an aeroplane uh, is willing to have the luxury while flying. Not everyone wants to have a shower while flying to a far distance. Very few, you know, so you need to identify them and put them in first class queue charge them triple time, five times more than the economic class guy, give him the service that, you, that he wants. Same thing we do here in networking. 
you identify those traffics that needs more attention, more priority, more bandwidth. We put them in a separate queue and we give them the special treatment that traffic needs. For that, you need to first of all discriminate the traffic. You need to identify the traffics and mark it with an ID saying this is more important bracket as as they mark as they as they mark your check-in baggages with the tags priority, premium class, first class, business class, economic class. Same way. We have to mark all the traffic that wants to use the network. And based on the marking, the prioritization is done because they go in different queues that has got different priority, different bandwidth. You know, so identifying traffic is important. Next is the QoS tools that we are going to focus. We have tools to classify, mark, and we have tools to put the marked queue, mark the traffic in the queue. And we have various um, technique to decide which traffic should get more service and which, uh, which traffic can be delayed, like waiter random early deduction, WRED, which is, which is going to avoid the congestion. We have something called traffic shaping, traffic policing, right? Which is called congestion management and so on. Now, uh, these are all the overall QoS that we are going to learn. Fine. We have quality of service. We, we understand the fundamentals of quality of service. We need the quality of service in the network because all networks are not, all the network traffics are not the same. For that, we need to classify and we need to mark and then we need to apply special uh, treatment, separate priority by putting them in separate queues. Now, <clears throat> now uh, I have two definitions for you here, quality of service. You can pick any one of them. Both are the same. They convey the same meaning. But the second definition is what I love uh, more. What is quality of service provides? What does it provide? It provides the ability for your routers, for your switches to give different priority to different application traffics. By default, you don't have the option of providing different priority to different application traffic. By default, it is first in, first out. Whoever comes in first, they goes out first. Assume you are in a shopping mall, you just bought one toothpaste, one toothpaste. And one customer in front of you who is trying to bill has got two trolley of items to bill. And you are standing right behind him. You just got only one toothpaste to bill and go out. But the, the guy on the, in the front, he has got two trolleys of too much of items to bill. Will you be happy waiting behind him for just billing one toothpaste? No way. So you will appreciate the vendor, you will appreciate the shopkeeper if he calls you friend of the queue because you got just one toothpaste and bill you and send you out. You know, you'll be happy. Ba based on the number of items, if someone will give the weightage and put us in queue, ah, we will be more happy than standing behind the customers who have got bandwidth hunger traffics some traffics are bandwidth hunger traffics they want to consume more bandwidth say for example someone is downloading a, a movie from internet oh it's bandwidth hunger traffic it is going to block consume more bandwidth more the path and we cannot keep waiting the voice packet cannot keep waiting behind this bandwidth hunger traffic so there is need for someone to come and say, hey, you are a very tiny voice packet. You can go front of the queue, to the beginning of the queue, to the front of the queue and get served first. That is quality of service. Quality of service is providing the ability to your device to differentiate the traffics and identify which traffic needs more priority 
and put the traffic to get processed first, to get the queue first to go out. You know, that's what quality of service is. It's the same meaning this two line also can be used. You know, so you identify the traffic between the sender and receiver and the quality of service tries to provide uh, less error, uh, less delay, uh, less jitter, and so on. We need quality of service to answer all these problems. You see here another picture which helps us to understand why we need quality of service. And this is you and this is me. Between you and me, it's not similar speed and bandwidth and devices. Here, uh, uh, you have 1000 meg, means 1 gig bandwidth. I also have 1 gig bandwidth, but between you and me, you see here, the bandwidth is very low. 1.54 MB only. Which means, all the traffic that goes out from my device will be waiting for a long time to go out of this router because the bandwidth is very low. You know, so it has to wait a lot. Sometimes the packet will get lost because it cannot wait for a long time. And also sometimes the packet will get tail dropped. What is tail drop? For every single port on a router or a switch, there is a hardware queue. There is a queue. And that queue has got a limited buffer. It's not unlimited. It's a, it has got a limited buffer. So all these data that goes will be now standing in the queue in the hardware buffer, waiting for its chance, its turn to go out. Hmm. You know, if voice packet starts waiting like that for all the data to go out first, finished. The receiver will hang the phone thinking that he got disconnected, you know. So voice traffics or time sensitive traffics, same video traffics or time sensitive traffics. I'm talking and you're able to hear me simultaneously it is because the voice traffic and video traffic has been prioritized in the real network. That reminds me the question of one of you who wrote in the forum. You are asking like, uh, uh, how will you implement QoS in the internet while the internet is, uh, is originally built as for all the people? That's a good question. Internet is not for only you and me, it's for all the people, I agree. The purpose of internet is to, uh, is to be used for everyone. Is it not legal to prioritize someone on, the, uh, uh, on another one's account? That was the question I read. Now, this is one of the questions you have written in the forum. You know, you're right. You're right. Then, you know, why do service provider charge you? You pay, right? You pay so that you get better service. You know, that's why you pay. You pay the hard earned money to get your service better. So, your hard earned money worth it. That's why you get more bandwidth. Of course, internet is for the people, but it is not free. You pay. The more you pay, more you get, you know. So based on what you subscribe, how much you subscribe, they are going to provide the quality of service for you. All right, that answers your question, I believe. Next. So we have different types of traffics. Here I just show you two different types of traffic. They are not the same. Some are bang, bandwidth hungry. They want more bandwidth. Some are uh, not that much. Say, for example, you are telnetting to someone, someone's device, telnetting to a router, telnetting a switch, or a switch, a switch, or you do Google Hangout, or you do WhatsApp. These are all what? Tiny, tiny interactive traffics. They are not bandwidth hunger traffics. So those tiny, tiny traffic has to be served first. It should not be like three, four, whoever comes first, will be served first. That will be a danger. If the bandwidth hunger guy comes in the front, then all the small bandwidth consuming packets will be lost at the back. So there is need for prioritization. There is need for identifying the traffic, putting them in different queues, 
based on which cue they take, the prioritizing prioritization will vary. The bandwidth reservation, the bandwidth allocation will be varying. You know, so why QoS again? You know, as we already discussed, we have different type of traffic, but they all try to use a single shared link. So we have to we have to differentiate the traffic so that the packet which which cannot be delayed will never be delayed or dropped. The packet that cannot tolerate jitter will not be experiencing jitter or delay. Now, or if you want to prioritize a customer who pays you more, you can increase the throughput for him by providing him a special reservation using some reservation protocol like RSVP. And you can give them the MPLS service. That also answers one of your question. Now, QoS is needed for us to control the network congestion. See, congestion will be always there. But during the congestion, QoS makes sure, QoS will help us to make sure that the important packets are not getting delayed or lost or experiencing jitter. You know, you are transferring a file. If that is delayed some millisecond, it's okay. But voice traffic and video traffic cannot be delayed. It won't tolerate if there is much delay or jitter. They are time sensitive. When you are downloading a, a movie from, from YouTube, it's okay if it is delayed for a few seconds. So during the congestion, what happens? Quality of service comes. Very important. When will the quality of service take effect? Only during the congestion. So in the, during the congestion, traffic, the quality of service comes and says, okay, hey, you are less important for me. You can, you can take the queue where you have long buffer to wait. Let me send all the time sensitive traffic via the queue where there is no need for waiting where the priority is high, you know? So all the important traffic, they flew while others are waiting because, you know, those packets, those waiting packets, even if they get lost, it can be recovered. Example, TCP packets. But UDP packets cannot be recovered. We cannot recover the UDP once last name is lost. So you have to prioritize all those UDP packets which cannot be recovered, all those time sensitive traffics by keeping those TCP packets in wait. That's how you can solve this congestion. You know, that's how you can solve. Now, when we talk about uh, quality of service, uh, you, you will come across these four words repeatedly because by using these things, uh, we provide quality of service or to solve these problems. You know, uh, someone, needs only small bandwidth, less bandwidth, but fast convergence, some traffic. Whereas the other traffics need more bandwidth, even if it is delayed, it's okay. So you need to identify the traffic and say, these traffics, if it is slow down, it's okay. So let us put it in the queue where you have more buffer to wait in the queue. And this time sensitive traffic, I'll put it in another queue where they will be having more bandwidth, where they will have high priority to use the processor and exit interface. So bandwidth, we use bandwidth in the queue. We, we put the bandwidth command. We say this amount of bandwidth will be given for voice traffic and it will be in the priority queue. And these amount of traffic will be given for the rest of the traffic. And this is not a priority queue. This is the secondary queue, you know, something like that. So bandwidth is very important to tune the quality of service as per our need. Now, what is this delay, jitter, and loss means here? Delay is 
delayed. Package is not going on time. Jetter. Jetter is, you don't have steady delay. It's, it's varying time to time. Sometimes the delay is two nanoseconds, sometimes the delay is two milliseconds. Ha, that is called jitter. You don't have a steady delay. It's unstable delay. That is called jitter. Loss is loss. You lost the packet already finished because there is no enough place for the packet to be accommodated in the queue. The packet get lost. There is no space in the queue to wait. As I told you already, every device will have a hardware queue. Will have a hardware queue. If there is no space in the queue to wait, as the other packets are going out, the tail drop will happen. The packet will get lost. You know, the quality of service is trying to provide softer queues. like this so the high priority traffic will be placed in this the the next uh, priority packets will be placed in this the packet with no priority will be placed in this anything in this tunnel in this pipe in this queue have to be given first priority to go out so that takes the first place in the queue hardware queue to get out of this device and if there is no traffic in the priority queue only then this traffic the traffic from this queue uses it and when there is no traffic in this then this queue traffic uses it you, you may think like no it's not fair it is fair because the traffic that is going inside this can be delayed for the receiver, he won't, you, he won't mind, he won't find big difference there. You can delay it. And the traffic that is going in this one can be recovered even if it is lost. But the packet that goes in this queue cannot be recovered. So it is fair to do like this. So quality of service helps us to create those softer queues. By creating it, it makes the device capable of identifying the traffics, different traffics placed in different queue, treat them with different priority. You know, it's the same thing explains here. I was talking about bandwidth. So you can, you can create a queue with 50% of bandwidth, the other queue with 20% of bandwidth, the other queue with the 30%, and you can put the traffic um, according to your needs, some traffic may need more bandwidth, so you will put in this queue, which is about 50% of the physical link bandwidth. And you may you may you may take the remaining 50 in that 20% I will give to the other traffic that is identified. Uh, say for example, this I'll give for voice. This I'll give for all TCP because they are bandwidth hungry traffics. And the remaining I'll give for all the rest of the traffic, which I don't know how to identify them because they, they don't frequently come, they are very rare. You know? So what is delay? As I already told you, delay is the time taken for the packet to get from source to the destination and back from destination to the source. You know. So for, for uh, communication, there is delay always. You cannot have zero delay. While I'm talking to you, there is delay. Though you, don't, I don't, you, can, you cannot recognize it, though you don't see it, but there is a delay, one-way delay, you know? So, but when, when you ping someone, the I, ICMP code request goes and, and it comes back. So there is a round trip delay. So delay is the time taken. There is going to be a delay, but the delay cannot be more than the toleration level, more than an acceptable delay. That's what quality of service guarantees you. There is delay even after having quality of service. But the delay will not be more for those time sensitive traffics. They will get the packet reached on time. 
you know the other traffics may be a little bit extra delayed because they can tolerate the delay so if you see there are different types of delay that we can see in the network processing delay you know traffic comes inside the router and the router does layer 3 route lookup for the destination it needs to find which exit is the appropriate one by looking into the routing table it does it it reads the complete routing table or the fib table the forwarding information base table or the ceph table the cisco express forwarding now it does the route lookup it takes some time to do that route lookup and identify the exit interface this is what we call as processing delay queuing delay now after processing the packet after finding the destination that's supposed to be taken it has to go through the queues how software queue and hardware queue to place the traffic in the queue there is a time taken there is some wait time in the queue because there are some packets in the front to get processed so you need to wait so there is a queue in the delay and there is a serialization delay what is that serialization delay <clears throat> After knowing that the exit interface is G0 slash 0 interface, there are a lot of things need to be done by the FIP table and the adjacency table to place the traffic in that line card. That is serialization delay. Propagation delay. After that, serialize after you you identify how I can place the traffic in the in the interface. Now there is a time taken to place it propagate or push it out you know there is going to be a delay on every single device and these are the four delays that you will see not only that there is also a delay called transmit delay between a and b router there is a link here it is not having the throughput of the motherboard it has got less throughput so definitely there is some time taken for the traffic to move from this end of the wire to this end of the wire so you have to live with this delay but when the high priority traffic comes how can i have less delay for those traffic is what quality of service is the maximum less delay you know with quality of service we could we could add the voice packets to the to the priority queue so that they do not have to wait long time in the queue this is reducing what delay queuing delay the good news is on the huawei devices we have on the motherboard itself by default lot of queues so that before it hits the processor as the traffic enters into Huawei devices like CX600 and so on, as the traffic enters in, the device by default it has got a classifier in it. It classifies and it identifies okay, this is a management traffic. I need to process this first before I process the other traffic. Say, for example, Telnet has to be processed first before your ICMP traffic. Why? Telnet is a management traffic. So if say for example there is a denial of service attack using ICMP and you want to stop the attack, you want to tell that to the router. If the telnet traffic is not prioritized, what will happen? You will not be able to control the attack. So the management traffic has to be processed first by the processor. So even the processing delay can be reduced for the for the important traffics, management traffics. In a Huawei device, not every vendor has got this. So, as I already spoke about, Jetter, Jetter is unsteady delay. Sometimes more delay, sometimes less delay. This is not an acceptable uh, quality for for voice and video. It needs to be a steady delay and acceptable delay. Loss is totally lost. You didn't receive the packet at all. 
So quality of service will help us to avoid the irreversible packet or the packet that cannot be recovered back to be lossless. Voice packet, UDP packets, video packets, they cannot be recovered back if it is lost. So QoS make sure that they are not getting lost in the cost of TCP packets. Because there is a transition. You have to drop somehow some packets to, to, to solve the congestion issue, which packet you're going to lose. I'm going to, I'm going to lose those packets that I can recover back. You know, that's what quality of service is. All right, so as I already told you, some are bandwidth hunger traffics, and some are interactive traffics, very small. You know, so those bandwidth hunger traffics or batch application traffics can be delayed, and these has to be interactive application traffics need to be prioritized. So this is what an acceptable delay for voice and video, jetter for voice and video. Loss cannot be so less than one percentage. This is an acceptable delay jitter and loss. Now, in QoS, we have three different models. The quality of service that we have on the network device, we have in three different classifications. Number one is best effort service, meaning there is no quality of service done by you. The default one, that's called best effort service. The default one, there's no special priority for any traffic there. All traffics are treated equal. That's best effort service, or first in, first out, free for service. That's one type of quality of service, which is by default on all the network device. There is another one called integrated service. Integrated service. It is like path reservation. You know, someone coming from a point A to B, and there is a big internet. For that A to B communicate to communicate, you do some bandwidth reservation. This bandwidth will, will not be allowed to be consumed by anyone. There is, there, is a, there is a reservation done for A to B to communicate. Till they finish the communication, the bandwidth will be there. We call this as integrated service or in-serve. In-serve, deep-serve. These are the two words. In-serve means integrated service. Deep-serve means differentiated service. Differentiated service is different. It's not end-to-end -end reservation. It is hop-by-hop -hop prioritization. Deep serve is hop-by-hop -hop prioritization. For every single hop, it can be a layer two hop or layer three hop. It can be a routed hop or it can be a switched hop. As the packet moves from A, to B, to a device called C, a router, and so on. On every single device, the, the priority session can, can be done and it may vary also. That is what differentiated service. Integrated service is end to end from A to B, that is integrated service. Integrated service, you will not be seeing in the internet between end to end. Long back when we were having frame relay, yes, we did have, we had that on the frame relay PVCs with committed information rate. 
but now we have uh, only within the ISP level, the service provider level, using RSVP, Reserves Reservation Protocol, on the layer three MPLS channel, a reservation can be done. A picture is coming in the next slide. Now, before that, let us again recall what is best effort service. It is nothing but uh, no traffics are treated with a different priority. All packets are treated equal. Whoever comes first, they get served first. So, unpredictable bandwidth. Why? Hmm, we don't know who is going to come with a big bandwidth hunger at, or at what time. As a result, what happens is there is unpredictable delay and which is also called as jitter. So there's going to be delay and it is also going to be unpredictable. Now this best effort is not okay for us. That's why we, we do quality of service either by insert or deep stir or both. If you see service providers, they will have insert as well as deep serve. For some customers, they will have integrated service. Integrated service, you know. Uh, there is a sender here, the receiver here. Between sender and receiver, there is a path reservation done. Sender says to the receiver, hello receiver, I want 100 meg reservation. Before I send the packet, I want the reservation to be done so that my packet won't be lost anywhere in the middle. So he's, he, he, he intimates the receiver by sending a path message. So immediately the ISP checks this. ISP guys, they check this. Okay, is this customer eligible to consume this 100, uh, 100 meg? Yeah, he's, he has subscribed for it. He has subscribed for layer three MPLS VPN with traffic engineering tunnel. Okay, fine. Then let me check. So he forwards the traffic and he finds there are three paths to reach this receiver. This is path number one, and this is path number two, and this is path number three. He checks the availability of 100 meg in this three path, and it gives the path which has got that 100 meg. So the path message is sent to all the paths, and one path confirms that. That is what called as reserve message. One path confirms that you can come through this way, 100, 100 meg is available for you. I'm reserving it. Till you finish sending, the tunnel will be waiting for you. You know, <clears throat> this is okay to use within the ISP for one or two customers or some customers. It all depends on how much of resource pool they have, but not possible for all the customers. Right. So that's what integrated service, end-to-end -end connection. You will not see all uh, across the internet. It, it's mostly seen between within the uh, within the MPLS. MPLS, we don't run across the globe. We run within the ISP. Within the ISP, we, we use something called labels to quicken our routing decision. When you have such MPLS environment, you can also have layer three traffic engineering. When you have traffic engineering, you can have this RSVP and provide this integrated service. But this is not for all of us, for everyone who are pays more, they get the service. Who are need, really needs these reservation, they go and pay more and they get the service. Differentiated service is for every single hop on every device. The prioritization, the decision making happens. Whether I can, whether should I prioritize this traffic or not is done on every single device. You know? So I, I remember this was also one of the question or um, from the audience. You wrote in the in the forum. So you have said something like, "If we have quality of service, won't this slow down the network?" Definitely not. 
um, it is going to avoid congestion. So it is going to improve the speed not how we'll talk about the replace zone and there was another question with how can i really apply this project okay, okay I, I i'll answer those questions later now the question that i was remembering is uh, will the will the quality of service be same for my traffic end to end see assume this is your location um, uh, let's say African continent and now you are using the internet and your destination that you are trying to reach is Asia somewhere in Asia from Africa there's a big internet there are many ISPs involved inside this cloud many many ISPs and this is your immediate ISP, your immediate ISP. Now, your traffic that goes out from your network, you may be willing to have more priority. So within your network, definitely you're going to have that wonderful experience of uh, convergence and data transfer. But you cannot expect the same good experience happy experience of data transfer between continent africa and asia when the traffic goes out of your network and enters the isp isp will have his own policy he will isp will have their own policy in deciding how much priority to give to your traffic that will vary depends on how much money we have paid here. Likewise, when traffic from this ISP goes to this ISP, only then you can get routed to Asia, then this ISP will have some policy accommodating this ISP traffic. Likewise, you know, every autonomous system will have different uh, priority. Everyone wants to treat their own traffic more uh, prioritized and one only after they will give priority for your traffic why should they give you high priority and give their own traffic low priority no one will do that right so this is what we see differentiated service deep serve is what we see in, in the real world always within the ISPs you can have that tunneling RSVPs, which is called INSEE. Deep serve is every device can decide whether I can give the same treatment that is given in the previous device or not. Now, in the previous device, the traffic is marked with high priority and it is coming to me. Now, I have to decide whether I can keep that same priority level in my network when your packet comes in or I need to remark it so that little lesser priority can be given to the packet coming from outside for which the differentiated service is what important that's why we use this it is per hop behavior PHP <coughs> all right now to do this quality of service we need to classify the traffic we need to mark the traffic and based on the marking the traffic has to be kept in different queues based on the queue which they take the prioritization the bandwidth reservation all is going to vary you know so identifying the traffic this is a voice traffic this is routing protocol bgp traffic this is uh, telnet ssh traffic snmp traffic ntp traffic this is stp traffic you know identifying traffic this is http traffic this is dns traffic identifying the traffic is what called as classification and you mark it so that they can be identified with the different colors or different numbers right so this was another question by one of you in the forum 
what is the difference between layer two and layer three QoS and their importance? You know, it's very important. Both layer two and layer three device should have, see if it is within your autonomous system, within your autonomous system, you will not be treating a traffic different, differently on different devices. You'll try to have the same treatment throughout your autonomous system. So I have routers, switches, firewalls. I have various types of devices in my network. I want to treat my packet the same way the switch treated in the router as well, or the firewall as well. You know, a traffic is entering in and the switch has given the high priority. I expect the same high priority in the router as well as in the firewall. But router is a layer three device. Um, uh, switch is a layer two device. Firewalls can even be layer three to layer seven. Upper layer, where N bar comes into picture, D packet inspection comes into picture. Yes, I have to go and set the priority in all layer level so that my traffic will be equally treated across the Wise traffic, if you take wise traffic, it should be treated the same way that is treated on the first device. The same way it has to be treated on the 50th device or the 10th device. It can be a router or a switch. It can be a layer three device or a layer two device or a, or a firewall which works from layer four to layer seven. No? So, Jay? Yes. Uh, sorry, we have a question from uh, a user. Do you want to take it now? Yep, yeah, please. Okay. Okay, please, uh, you can see the question now. Muhammad? Uh, yes, I have a question. How different products, like for example, any 40 or switching products like S127 or our cloud engine switches, how they are handling the QoS? See, every device have got their own. Uh, uh, if you go to the data sheet, you will find how they have the default hardware queues in it. Um, that we have to discuss in the you know, uh, detailed training. It cannot be done here. It, it differs from series to series. But what we are discussing now is the software queues that we can have it on any device. This is common for any series device. <clears throat> Okay. And can we proceed? Uh, yes, sure. All right. So we have for for the switches to identify and classify, we have three bit reservation. We call it the COS bits. <clears throat> and for the same treatment to be given on the layer three device for the packet, we have similar three bit reservation called QoS bits, type of service bit. Plus, additionally, you have got another six bit reservation so that you can have more marking possibilities, you know, two to the power of six combination. <clears throat> you will have more options to mark, more, more options like AF11, AF31, AF21 more marking facility called DSCP, different ship of service port point. By using these markings, you can go to a TCP header in layer four and say for TCP 23, I want it to be given DSCP uh, so and so, uh, AF31, AF31. If you want to really know about this AF or DSCP, you need to really take another big training on QoS. We don't have the big time to explain all this stuff, but this is used for layer three quality of service. You also have three bit, just three bit. You also have six bit in layer three, whereas in layer two, you just got three bit preservation. And now this reminds me another question asked by someone with a diagram with the green color box in the, I have an eight tier network, I have MPLS, I have microwave, uh, I have a microwave link and feel as again ATN, which is more appropriate. Can I have DSCP or uh, um, some C tag? 
uh, VSCP is the best one. Uh, but since you said MPLS, also make sure that your MPLS experimental bit, the three bit reservation in MPLS is all secure. You have not given that as an option in the, uh, in the forum. That is also one more thing you need to consider along with VSCP. For layer three, wherever layer three is there in between that ATM to ATM, uh, wherever there is routing, you know, sometimes some radio wave get into routing IP network, then there may be a need for routing, then DSCP will come into picture. Wherever you have the MPLS tunnel, MPLS um, uh, switches and routers, they all will use MPLS label, uh, which is 2.5 layer above layer two after processing MAC address. Before processing IP address, it reads the label. There is a three bit reservation called experimental bit. Out of the 32 bit MPLS label, you got three bit for US. So, along with the DSCP, you, you, you also need to tune this three bit if you want to have a quality of service end to end. So that, will, that answers one of your questions uh, in the forum. Now, there are different types of tools depending on what you need, where you need it varies. See, to classify, you may you may be using an access list. It can be a MAC ACL or it can be a IP address ACL or IP ACL or layer three ACL. You may be using marking um, the technique that we saw. You it may be a COS marking. You may be using the three bit of COS to mark or maybe a if it is a layer three device, it can be a TOS bit or DSP bit. That's one tool, classifying and marking. And then we have also queuing. Queuing is congestion management technique. We have different types of queue, weighted, fair queue, class-based weighted fair queue, and so on. So we have queuing as a tool to manage congestion. It is not to avoid congestion, it is to manage congestion. Now, more detail is coming. And then we got traffic shaping and traffic policing. It is something called uh, accommodating the traffic or admission control. Traffic shaping and traffic policing comes under a classification of tool called admission control. Now, how I am going to admit this traffic? This traffic is coming, it is huge in size. How am I going to handle it? Am I going to drop all the excess packets someone is sending? See, me, for example, a customer has subscribed for 100 meg, but this customer is sending 150 meg of throughput to the ISP. Will ISP allow that 100 throughput? No way. You have subscribed for 100, 100 meg. I'm going to accept only 100 meg, accommodate only 100 meg, and drop an, uh, another 50 excess meg of data. 50 meg of bits. We call this as policing. Policing is done on the service provider side. They police it. They monitor how much you send, spend, uh, sorry, spend. When you send more than the peak level, more than the committed information rate, more than the peak level, they're going to drop it. If they drop it, then they are doing what? Policing. Instead of dropping, if they will take the excess traffic and put it to another slow queue and make it to wait for some time and send it when the network becomes free, we call it a shipping. Shaping is not uh, shaping is not an angry father who gets angry as much as you make mistake and cut off your head. That's not that's not the uh, right word that I should have used. Uh, shaping is shaping is like a good father. When you go wrong, he treats you so well. He gives a small punishment and say, "See, this is what the cause of what you have done." Don't do this again. That is shaping. Policing is like as, as you, you you go wrong, the, the cops on the road, they find you immediately. 
That is policing. Father don't, father shapes you, but police will police. They discard the excess traffic. You know, so congestion avoidance is like when there is huge congestion, how I'm going to control, how I'm going to reduce the congestion. I'm going to reduce the congestion by dropping some of excess traffic. By dropping some of excess traffic. Which traffic? Some traffic that I can recover back. By doing so, I can I can reduce the congestion. Right. So congestion and shaping mostly we do it before we send it to the public network. We don't want our traffic to get lost. So before sending, we shape it. Okay, I am subscribed for 100 meg. If it is going more than 100 meg, I will I'll just reduce 50 meg and place it in the queue for later sending for the shaping. So as a sender, as a customer, we use shaping. As a provider, he will use policing. As the condition avoidance, we when, when there is huge traffic going to go out and then there's heavy congestion, I have to somehow drop some packets to reduce the congestion for other traffic to go comfortably. So which one I am going to drop to reduce the important packet getting lost is what congestion avoidance is. See, uh, I, need to, I need to finish. So admission control, I have already spoken, policing and shipping. Congestion management is nothing but queuing. Congestion avoidance is like dropping packet beforehand so that they will not get dropped somewhere. <coughs> so, you know, you, you, as an example, I can uh, give a uh, weighted fare key. Um, early detection, early uh, W red, W red, it's called as W red, weighted random early detection, random early detection. So before the congestion hits, before the, the bandwidth hits the peak, and before it causes congestion, you can sense that there is going to be a congestion and you keep dropping some unwanted, or, or dropping some less important traffic to avoid congestion. You know, as I already told you, some are used in edge, some are used in code. Um, when they say edge, they talk about uh, customer edge and provider edge. All right, about policing and shaping, we have finished talking. Uh, this presentation is with you. You can go through this. As I already told you, if anyone is going to use more than 250 GB, 250 MB, he has, he has subscribed for 250 MB. If he's using more than that, it will be dropped. If he's using less than that, he will be transmitted. That's what called as policy. Shaping is not like that. If he is using excess, that excess will be queued for later transmission. That's what for shaping. All right. Queuing, we have different uh, queuing methods. Q4 is default, weighted fat queue, priority queue, low latency queuing, which is nothing but a priority queue along with the class based weighted fat queue. Right? So, congestion avoidance, as I told you, uh, we drop the packet somehow to avoid congestion. Packet drop strategy, which packet to drop? The packet that can be recovered. So, weighted random early reduction to take place. All right, so to mo know more about quality of service, there's a need for a separate training. This, uh, this is overall of quality of service. Now, we are going to get into the, the lab. How do we do the uh, implementation of quality of service? This is what we need. We need this four step approach. Traffic has to be classified, and then behavior has to be defined and take the classifier and behavior, put it under the policy and bind the policy either to the VLAN or to the line card or to the interface or to the global level. You know? So four step approach, identify, put your voice, fine. Now, what sort of treatment do you want? How much bandwidth do you want? I want to give committed information rate of uh, uh, 2,000 bits. Uh, if P is consuming up to PR peak rate of like 3,000, you can allow him to go. But if he is going more than 3,000, just drop him. You know? 
Uh, that is what behavior. Now I take this one, which is identified using an access list or a protocol or a, or, or some way of you know classification through TCP or UDP protocol like upper layer, layer four classification, bind is both, you know, both classifier and behavior binder under the policy and the policy is called under the uh, any one of this either globally or under interface level or field level the four step approach diagrammatically explained here now quickly i'm going to show you the command this is the access list i have written for See, there is an IP phone whose IP address is 10.0.0.1. There is another PC 10.0.0.2. Now, I have written an access list. This is Huawei commands. Before we go to the ACL mode, you have to type system view. If you are from Huawei background, you know it very well. Now, I type access list number and this is the access list identifier i have two rules rule number one identify the source sorry i don't want this to be in rule number two i'm going to rewrite this okay i'm going to there's slight typo error okay let me explain you with slide book uh, this is the inside this between these two lines there is going to be ACL number 2001 see there is an access list number called 2001 and it is rule number one in 2001 ACL this is rule number one in 2000 this is rule number there are two access lists one is access list 2000 which identifies the first computer or, uh, or not the computer, in our case, it is IP phone. The IP phone. So the, all the traffic coming from IP phone is identical, will, will be matched with the access list called 2000. And this is identified in the access number called 2001. So this is what called as classifier. This is the first step in here configure a traffic classifier for the classifier to use i need acl so access list is a step you can call the step zero according to this diagram this diagram i have said cla classifier as step one if that is the case then i need to say this one as zero step zero you have an access list to call inside the classifier Right. So traffic classifier, you give any name, and then this will come automatically and operation. If match ACL 2000 means you're matching with this traffic, if that matches, what action to be taken, that will come in behavior and in policy. Here, just classifying. I'm just classifying all the voice traffic as 2000 and all the uh, uh, data traffic is 2001. Data traffic is coming from this computer. Voice traffic is coming from the IP4. Now, step number three, see I'm setting bandwidth resolution. I'm, I'm writing classifier, one classifier called B1 that has got computed information rate of 1000. Peak information rate is 2000. If it is within this limit, it is green, you can allow him to pass. If not, it means if it is within 1000 green, pass. If he reaching peak 2000, he is yellow, still you can pass. But if he is going beyond 2000, which means red, this card, you know, this red, the green, these are all internal to your Huawei operating system. You can also type without that. So, uh, you can also have different policy. Yellow itself, you can say, don't pass, discard. That's up to you. It's a, your policy. Here, my policy is, if traffic is coming 1,000, 
bits per second. And I'm, I'm considering it as green and I am allowing. If he's coming excess, another 1000, even then I'm allowing him. You may discard him, but I'm allowing. Anything more than 2000, I'm discarding. Likewise, I have another behavior. Now, under the policy map, this is the third step in the load chart. Third step, police, sorry, policy, configuring the traffic policy. Here I call one classifier and one behavior. This is the voice traffic. For the voice traffic, I'm giving this reservation. If voice traffic itself comes more than that, more than 2,000, I'm going to discard because everyone should be given some chance to use the network. For the data traffic, I have set the limit. This we put another policy. This is the fourth step. At last, we apply that to an interface. I say traffic police policy P1 outbound direction. Inbound or outbound, it depends on the traffic flow. You know, some verification commands in the production, this command will be very useful. This command will tell you how many packets have been discarded because of violation, because of going more than the peak level. How many bits have been consuming the peak level more than PAR level? And how many packets are within the PAR level? All these outputs you can see here. And this is to see what has been configured on the interface of the QoS policy for the inbound and outbound. All right. So all these three commands are good verification commands. Now I'm going to quickly demonstrate. I will not take more time. I have already configured it. The same commands I have pasted it. I know I will run out of time. I have pasted it. I have kept everything ready for you to just see. You know, I have applied the quality of service here. For 10.0.0.1, I have set some reservations, CAR, PAR. For 10.0.0.2, I have done some reservation. And I have put outbound on Ethernet 002. Let me show you one by one. I won't take more than uh, 10 minutes. Yeah. So, system view and display, input display. I want to go with uh, the, the first command. This is first command display traffic police interface. And display traffic. On interface, the interface name is G002. G0 slash 0 slash 2. If you see here, this output, on G002, outbound policy, I have said for classifier 1, that classifier 1 is nothing but 10.0.0.1. I'll show you the access list. The access list number is 2000. The access list number is 2000. And the 2000 is matching with 10.0.0.1. Now, if the traffic comes, this is what the committed information rate is, the, what the peak information rate in kilobits. You don't need to type in bytes, it will get converted automatically. So I said, if it is within this limit, you pass. If it is more than committed information rate, less than PAR, Again, you can pass is a look, but if it is more than that, if it is red, discard. And I got another one, ACL 2001, which is matching 10.0.0.2 traffic. And I have said here, this is the limit. If it is within 2000, pass. If it is within 3000, again, pass. If it is more than 3000, discard. Now, let me show you that line. Show, sorry, display, current configuration. You see, this is the line. Uh, traffic behavior one, 
this is the limit. If it is within that 8,000, then it is green. If it is more than 8,000, it is going to be red, this card. Now let me show you again on top. B1, I put competitive information rate as well as uh, peak information rate as 800. That's what you see here, 800. This conversion of 4,000, you no need to worry. You just give this command green pass in your discard. Like this behavior to see the policy. I call class one and B1. Where is class one? Let's go to the top. Class one, the classified one is calling ACL1. What is the ACL1 got? ACL1 got this one. And classifier 2 should have another ACL, but I did not write. I have made a mistake here. I'm going to correct it quickly. I'm going to say access list 2,000, 1. And I'm going to say rule 1. And I'm going to just cut and paste this one. This last is the zero stands for the wildcard marks. Means all 32 bit is 10.0.0.2. And now I'm going to, sorry. I'm going to show you the access list once again. Show run display current configuration. Look at this, I got two access. This one I can remote anytime by getting into this access list and I can say undo rule number two, it will remove. So we got an access list. We got the, the, the classifier that calls the access list and we got the behavior separately and we got the policy which puts classifier and behavior together at last, we call this policy map or policy, traffic policy, under the interface, you see, the interface. The interface is G0 slash 0 slash 2. That's the interface that I want to provide quality of service. I say any traffic that is going out needs to check this policy P1. And if you go to policy P1, it tells who can use how much of bandwidth accordingly the action will be taken. You know, so this is where I would like to stop here. If you have questions, you can ask questions. If you have more questions, you can write in the forum more. I think I have answered almost all the questions except one, which was already in the forum. One of you have asked like in open, open phone network, what sort of, uh, is, it, uh, is it an end-to-end -end verifier? It is an end-to-end -end, mm, implementation that we have in the, in the cloud network, right? I think the question was uh, was like in the cloud networking or in the in the network where we have open flow. Do we have end to end? Yes, we we have end to end quality of service, but uh, you will not have more granular there as you have in the hop by hop integrated uh, differentiated service. And the last question is, how can I really apply quality of service personally? I just showed you how to apply. The other question was, uh, quality of service slows down. The, no way it is slowing down the uh, internet. As I already told you, you are going to then uh, drop or delay those packets that can be retransmitted or can be delayed. So the user is going to experience really very fast network if you have proper quality of service. He is expecting speed in not all the traffic, some traffic. He, if, if the customer is expecting fast, good quality of service for all his traffic, he will pay you more so that you can give him some end to end channel resolution. All right, so uh, internet, the cloud is a pool of resources. So you don't worry, like, internet is for public. If someone is given more priority, the other will suffer. Yeah. Yes, people going in economic class are not comfortable. I always try to first class just for what? I don't like congestion. I pay more and I get more. 
same story here in the network. Right? And also we learn the difference between layer two, layer three QoS. Layer two QoS is three bit, layer two QoS we have three bit, which is continuous. We also have got DSCP, which is six bit. Hope you enjoyed my session. Thanks for joining. Ellen, thanks over. Um, okay, does anyone have a question? Please use the raise hand by, uh, option if you have any questions. Okay, we have a question. Question, please. Hello, we can hear you. You can uh, please say your question. Hello, good afternoon. Yes. yes. Yeah, a bit actually, I was like uh, wondering about the command traffic policy mode, uh, uh, fast mode enable. I think I missed that. All right, the command lines are uh, will be given to you. Now I'll send you this. I, I will be sharing this presentation. Uh, you yes. can use the command. Yes, you will. Uh, you will find the the presentation on the forum. We will uh, we will add the recording there. So you can watch it later. You have the presentation as well as you have the commands in the in the yeah, pages. I, um, actually, uh, I mean for the command line, no, they all clear for me. I just okay. uh, asked for traffic policy fa um, mode, fast mode enabled. That's only. I think it's uh, not. Okay, uh, fast mode enable will will bypass all the existing usage of uh, the network. It is like giving high priority. More information, you know, you need to actually take another special training on this because it has got huge subject to deliver. Okay. okay. Okay, it seems like we have uh, one more question. Yes, please, question. Okay. Um, hello. 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 Yes. Yes, yes we can hear you. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, I had a question. What was the difference between uh, 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 traffic shaping and uh, on the interface we we can write the QoS? So. So, what was the main difference? See, uh, it's a, it's the question should be like this. This question, I'm trying to put it in another way. What is the difference in uh, setting QoS on the interface or yeah. setting the QoS by this MQC configuration method? Yes, yes, this yes. What I'm showing is what called as MQC. So, the answer for the question is, uh, it is all, already there in the presentation, but I'm going to also explain you. Because okay. of MQC, you will have multiple match rules on the same interface uh, on uh, on both the direction. If you don't have MQC, see, this is what the answer for your question looks like. MQC allows multiple QoS methods per interface per direction, which will not be available if you don't use MQC. And thank yeah. you. This was the question. Thank you. Welcome. So with uh, uh, with MQC, uh, we can write a different uh, QoS than the uh, single interface. Of course, you can have different uh, markings for different traffics, and you can have multiple queues uh, in uh, in a single policy. And when you call the policy with multiple queues, all will be enforced. So you will have multiple methods. Like you can have uh, PQ priority queuing, you can have waiter fair queuing or class based waiter fair queuing or uh, WN, all these things together in a particular direction on an interface. Yeah. Which is not possible if you don't have MQC. Yeah, yeah, I understood. If you have a multiple uh, uh, connectivities, multiple uh, clients around on the same interface uh, okay. with different VLANs, we can apply MQC. Correct. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, we have one more question. <laughs> okay. Please. Hello. Uh, hi, Jaya. This is Danish. I have a one question. In your configuration, uh, you have defined uh, committed information rate is eight. So uh, I mean, a CBS and PBS is automatically calculated. Means like a vendor, or you have manually defined by the vendor. It's by the vendor. Okay. Okay. So uh, means uh, four thousand is specified by the vendor. Correct. So, that is right. 
You're right. Okay. Let, let me show you one more time in the output uh, uh -huh. what I have configured and what has been shown displayed. You see, what I have configured uh, is not this. this. These things I didn't type. These yes. things I didn't type. I'll tell you what I have typed. It is there in the presentation. I just type only this. Um, only this. Okay. The number is different. I just typed only this. Yeah, only CIR and PIR. And, uh, and this yeah. thousand is automatically calculated. Means oh, some formula, yeah. Correct. So it's taking as per standard, I mean, uh, as per ITU, and, and it's vary from the, uh, vendor to vendor because, uh, uh, like, if uh, I'm talking about for standard, as per standard. Yes, correct. Okay, okay. And it's a bit per second, right? Sorry. Bit per second. Okay, okay, clear. Sir, one more question, uh, the same question. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so, so we can hear what, was the di what was the difference uh, between MQC and uh, the QS uh, which was written on the interface? Is, is, the, is the bandwidth restriction the same or uh, any difference of uh, bandwidth? Uh, See, what we are using is MQC, even though we are calling the policy map under the interface. I think you misunderstood the um, uh, question before question. Now, someone was asking, like, what is the difference between MQC and the quality of service right on the interface itself? Uh, yeah. Uh, you have misunderstood this. See, there is a way to, to set priority on the interface without any classification marking. Uh, yes. means, you, know, you can set some bandwidth uh, and you can tell that, uh, say for example, OSPF. OSPF assumes that I just got only 100 meg bandwidth, but actual bandwidth is 1 gig, 1000 meg. And that is one way of quality of service so that OSP will not consume more, more of the bandwidth, the other traffic, the user traffic can use it. That's one way of considering quality of service without NQC, the old way, the traditional way the classical way I can say, but now we have MQC where you can consider all traffic, not just OSPF. You can have different treatment for OSPF, different treatment for voice, different treatment for everybody. You can do some sort of prioritization and some sort of queuing and have all of them applied in the interface. Hmm? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, I want to add one more thing. Uh, someone have asked uh, what is the difference between uh, policy and shaping. So I just wanted to add, means uh, uh, policy basically. For example, if you are enterprise uh, customer and you are and you and, and you have take a link from some ISP. So from ISP side, we, uh, that interface is uh, facing toward an enterprise customer. So on uh, ISP side, you will basically applied uh, policy. And uh, from enterprise side, means for example, if your interface facing toward ISP, so uh, from uh, outgoing interface, you will apply policy uh, shaping. Very correct, Maurice. Very correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for the question. Does anyone else have uh, any questions? Okay, it seems that uh, we don't have any other questions. Actually, we do now. <laughs> so we'll take one more question. Yes, please. Hello. Question, please. Yes, I think uh, there's a problem with the unmute bu button actually. Hello. But now, we, okay, Hello, now we can hear you. Hello. Hello, excuse me. Hi. Yes, we can hear you. Me? Uh, so my question is, how do do you verify the Q limit value? Okay, this is the command that you need to use. Display traffic policy interface and the interface name. That will show you uh, how much of uh, committed information grade and peak information grade has been given by us. Uh, the command, what is the command for uh, this that? Is this is the command. Display traffic police, policy, interface and interface. If you want to see the live uh, 
packet getting dropped because going beyond the peak information rate, packet that has been passed because it is within the committed information rate, then you use this command, the last command, uh, statistic, so the second command. If you use a statistic command, you can get the live information of how much has been passed, how much has been discarded. And if you want to see just the overall configuration, that's what your question was. If you want to just see the overall configuration of uh, the queue limits, then display traffic police, interface, whatever the traffic policy that has been applied on the interface, all queue, queues and all the uh, buffer limit of the queues that you have set, everything will be displayed. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think uh, this. Okay, one last question by, uh, but but then I think we will uh, we will have to end it. Hello, do you have one more question? Uh, how come we will get the presentation and the recording playback? Yes, the presentation and the recording will be posted on the Huawei Enterprise Community. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, basically this is what I'm trying to introduce. The Huawei Enterprise Community uh, is hosting this webinar and will be hosting more webinars in the future. Uh, if you haven't registered yet, please go to, uh, to our community, register, log in if you already have an account. Uh, we already have a webinar post uh, about uh, the current uh, webinar. So um, later on, uh, we will present you three questions. And you can go there, answer them, and get a chance to win a $20 Amazon gift card. Ten users will be selected uh, from the ones who answer the questions correctly. Um, we hope that you can join our uh, community. We already have over 163,000 members. We have over 42,000 posts that you can learn from. You can ask your questions there. You will get a solution in under 24 hours. And also, if you are active enough, you can join one of our one of our programs. You can join the MVU program. You can get the high coins, which are the internal currency used to get the rewards that you can see in the picture. Currently, we have Amazon.com gift cards and um, exam vouchers for Huawei certifications. Uh, but in order to get access to them, you need to to gain high coins by different actions taken in the forum. And uh, you can use the high coins in exchange for these rewards. Uh, some of you might already know that uh, we have monthly activities and monthly webinars. We have rewards for each of them, but uh, please make sure you follow us each month and uh, we'll keep you posted about all the new activities and webinars. Um, and you you are asking where you can find find the recording it's exactly on the the website i'm talking about the huawei enterprise community the english version this is where we will also post the the recording this is how the webinar post looks like you can uh, type in the the title or you can find it uh, in you can just just click on the banner uh, go to forum.huawei.com enterprise and uh, this is the, the website where, where you can find the webinar post. This is the post. Uh, in the comment section, you can leave your uh, answers. And as I said before, 10 users who answer all the three questions correctly will get a chance to win the $20 gift card. Uh, we also, uh, Jay already answered the, most of the questions that were posted in the forum. Uh, three users will be selected to uh, and will receive 50 high coins for posting their questions. Uh, Jay is the best, uh, uh, is qualified to choose the best questions. I will trust him uh, on this one. Uh, and uh, now you can, uh, Jay will show you the three questions that are basically based on the content that was already presented. Um, I think that for some of you, they will be a, they will be easy enough. Um, 
Okay, I think there's an issue with the presentation. Should I, should I post the question now? Yes, um, right. I would like us to present the, the three questions. We will uh, also update them in the forum post and the people will be able to answer them. All right, question number one. Okay, this is a true or false type of question. I think uh, everyone who followed the presentation should be able to easily answer this one. So where are they going to answer this? Uh, after the webinar, we invite them to the community to answer their questions. All right. When the webinar uh, stops, we will also post the questions there in case someone missed them. Uh, they can, they will be able to find them in the forum as well. Okay, this is the second question. Yes. Okay, I hope. Um, question number three. Yes. Okay, so go to the to forum.huawei.com, the English version of the website. You can search webinar on QoS uh, implementation, introduction, introduction and implementation. You can also find the banner that you can click on the website and go directly to the webinar post. And uh, that is where you can answer the three questions and get a chance to win. I don't know, in case you missed uh, anything, uh, we will post the recording of this session soon. You can also write to me by email or by eSpace if you, if you need me to give you the link to the webinar post. Maybe if you are not familiar with the community yet, I can give you the link where you can answer the questions. And uh, I hope that uh, you will follow us uh, in the future because uh, more webinars will come. So you have a lot to learn. Okay, guys, this was it. Thank you, Jay, very much for uh, your presentation. Thank you. Um, I count on you to choose the best questions that were posted in the forum. You are, uh, um, I think you're uh, more able than uh, me to do this. Uh, I trust you on this one. Um, and uh, I don't know, if you missed a part of the presentation, don't worry, you'll find the, the recording soon. So you will be able to watch it later. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you, Jay, for hosting. Um, as expected, you are a great okay. host. Thank you for taking the questions. And uh, guys, I'm sorry, if you have more questions, uh, you can go on the forum and post them there because uh, it's, it's already late. So uh, we have to, to end the webinar now. Okay, thank you very much. It was a thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Bye, guys.